that's how we got the wolf clan from her. This is more than just a museum exhibit. For the artist, it's more like a family reunion. Even now I can feel these guys. They're like my children and I haven't seen them in, for a long time. And this one little piece was looking at me, this little mask and saying, where the hell you been, Dad? It's 40 years, you know? <laughs> haven't seen you for 40 years. This is Wolves, the art of Dempsey Bob, the first full career retrospective of the Talton Clinkett artist's work. The more than 60 pieces here were wrangled from private collectors, pulled from storage, or loaned out by the National Gallery. We never thought we'd get this far, you know what I mean, like in one lifetime, because of where we started. You can't hold monuments up to yourself, you know, because how are you going to get better, right? Yeah. Bob is one of the most prolific carvers of the Northwest Coast an Order of Canada inductee and recipient of a Governor General's Award. But when he started out, there was little interest or market for coastal art, something that started to change in the early 80s. The idea that he's reviving his culture is so important, you know, because he was not allowed to carve, uh, because his people were not allowed to express their culture, their religion for so long. The idea that he can be here in this museum now and that we're all surrounded by by this magical production, it's so meaningful, it's so empowering, it's the way it should be. Historical coastal items are displayed as objects of curiosity in museums across the world, like these two totem poles at the Humboldt Forum in Berlin, purchased by an explorer for $65 back in the 1800s. If you compare it with costs for logistics or transport, it was much, much less. Institutions are slowly warming up to the idea of repatriating these cultural items. The National Museum of Scotland, for example, returned a stolen memorial totem pole to the Niska'a Nation late last year. Bob says these items are important for education, but also important, acknowledging how they were used in the past. When we were in the British Museum, we felt like the pieces wanted to come home with us. And we sang them a song. And it was really powerful because they haven't heard a song for 200 years. You know, they were used in dance, the masks, and, you know, and with songs and acted out, and, you know what I mean? They weren't just pieces and they were like part of us and living pieces. Meantime, to Bob, this show is a celebration of how far Indigenous artists have come. We, we didn't know how to make tools. We didn't know what kind of wood. We didn't, you know. But we knew the stories. I was lucky I learned the stories. The exhibit runs until September 10th at the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. Lindsay Richardson, APTN National News, Montreal.